So if you're watching this video, I am assuming you're mostly a fresher in your second year or you have good enough time to prepare for your placements. So why I'm making this video is mostly nowadays you'll see that many people they are posting content like these 100 problems will make you clear any sort of companies, these 50 algorithms, these 20 data structures, these 150 problems, these are more than enough to clear any interview. But according to me, that's not the case. And also nowadays, many people who are starting out with code forces or lead code, they like to follow this approach called learn first and then practice. That is, they would be finishing all the sheets, they would be finishing all the algorithms, data structures. In their first month only, they want to cover complicated data structures such as segment trees, and then only they'll move forward with uh, contest, lead code contest or code forces contest and there would always be a heavy bias between whether I should go with lead code or code forces. So the main intention of this video is to give you a no fluff guide on how to actually practice what worked for me. So a little about me if you're watching my videos for the first time. I am an expert at code forces and I am an SDE at PhonePay. I have been programming for more than 2 2.5 years. I have spent most of my time at code forces but I have my views both on lead code and code forces and what worked best for me. So this is like a personal opinion, like it's up to you whether you want to follow this method or not. So before we start, I want you to understand that nowadays companies don't limit themselves to lead code problem set. Companies like to select the best problems. It can be from any platform, code forces, ad code or all these competitive programming sites. So don't think that way key problem sets would be limited to lead code. And you need to practice in such a way such that you are not only limiting yourself to lead code, you are actually learning the problem solving ability. Also, there is a common mindset that people think that online assessment, which is the OA, that is much harder as compared to the technical interviews these days. That is also not correct. Nowadays, in technical interviews also, you would face many hard problems. So the whole intention of this is not to scare you. I just want to tell you that please focus on the problem solving ability. Don't think about the platform much and you need to focus on the problem solving ability. That's all. So let's get started with how do you actually achieve this. So let's say you're in your first year or in your second year and you have good enough time to prepare for placements. What I would suggest is if you have good enough time, please take the hard path that is code forces or any competitive programming platform of your choice. And why do I say that is because that's the thing that worked for me and I'll tell you why that worked for me. I'm not suggesting that you directly like if you're new to programming, you directly go and open code forces and start solving problems. Getting into code forces requires a certain mindset. So before that, you need to spend some time with problem solving. So what I did was I started with HackerRank. You must have heard of HackerRank. It's up to you. You can also go with lead code. You can go with HackerRank. So take some time and get comfortable with what problem solving is all about. Like what type of problems you get. Start with basic pattern questions and all. So get a crunch of what is TLE, like what is the input output format, what are constraints, like all all the time complexity logic so get comfortable with that now once you're done with that you're okay with hacker and now you can move to a slightly better platform which is lead code you can spend some time there uh, like spend some time on medium problems uh, you can also go with easy problems and start giving contests don't wait for the ideal time there would never be an ideal time the learning never stops when it comes to the whole uh, programming thing the whole problem solving thing you will always have to learn so never think that you will reach an ideal state and then you will start with the contest you will never reach that state. You will always keep learning. Every contest will teach you something. So you continuously have to give contests no matter how ready you are. So when I was in lead code, I spent some time with easy problems, medium problems, some hard problems, which I faced during the uh, contest. And that's all. So I spent about a week or two in lead code. And then finally I moved to code forces. So now the most important thing, you have two to three years to spend in code forces. What are you going to do in these two to three years? The simple answer is practice, contest, and then upsolving. And the most important thing, progressive overloading. So let's look at all these terms that I just said. So practice means basically during practice, you need to follow something which is called progressive overloading. And what that means is, for example, you are solving problems which are rated 800 and you are seeing that you're quite fluent with it means you are still in your comfort zone. So if you now continue to solve problems which are rated 800 just because you are able to solve them, that's not going to help you. You will always be in that 800 level only. You need to challenge yourself. So now you will take a further step and start solving problems which are 1000. So the pattern that I usually follow is, for example, I decide that I want to solve problems which are rated 1000. I should not be able to solve all the problems which I'm practicing which are rated 1000. If that's the case, that means I'm again in the wrong rating range and I have to move forward. So now again, I will increase my rating. For example, I increase it to 1100. And that's when I realize that 1100 is the rating for me because I'm not able to solve all the problems. I'm able to solve some problems. For some problems, I need to watch the editorial. So that's like my range. I need to stay in that range and spend some time in that range. Once I am very fluent with 1100 rated problems, I'll again increase my rating. And that is what progressive overloading is. You need to understand what your limit is. You need to stay in that limit and you need to increase that limit. 
and you need to repeat this process for the next 2 to 3 years you are spending in code forces now let's come to the second important thing which is giving contests so when it comes to contests you actually need to give contests from every platform possible be it code forces lead code or ad coder all these platforms that i just said they have a totally different dynamics of the problem set that they provide in the contest so the problem sets in ad coder is very much different from what you get in lead code and lead code is also very different from what you get in code forces and ad coder so that's what i said initially you need to learn problem solving and don't limit yourself to a particular platform when it comes to giving contest i need you to stay in one platform if you're practicing but when it comes to contest you need to keep track of all the possible platforms and you need to upsolve them now what do you mean by upsolving contest so upsolving basically means that for example there were four problems in a contest i was able to solve for example the first two problems now the third problem i wasn't able to solve right so there can be two reasons why i wasn't able to solve that particular problem first reason time constraint second reason i didn't have the knowledge to solve that problem or i didn't get the intuition if it's the first reason then after contest you need to spend some time with that problem at least 2 to 3 hours see if you can solve that problem if you can solve that problem apply this whole logic that i'm telling you to the fourth problem again try the fourth problem if you're not able to solve it you are not getting the intuition so you basically need to get to the problem for which you don't know the intuition for example that's problem 4 now you spend 2 to 3 hours you tried looking at the editorials so before editorials if you know code forces also has the hint system so you also looked at the hints there were total of 3 hints for example you also looked at all the hints but still you weren't able to solve that problem so now you will learn for example in the editorial they mentioned that this problem requires kadane's algorithm you will go to that page like you will go to whatever resource you are following you will learn kadane's algorithm and then come back to this problem and try solving it again so basically the whole idea is so get to the problem that is exhausting you and you need to solve that problem that is when you consider a contest being done that is called up solving also many people have this common query that when you're solving a problem how much time do you spend that's totally up to you everyone has a different way of practicing so for example you spend one hour on the problem and you are aware that you are going on the right track that means you need to stay on that problem you can spend a uh, two hours also if you think that you are going on the right track and you have a feeling that maybe you will be able to reach the solution eventually If you think you're lost and you have already spent one hour or one and a half hour, you need to start looking at hints, editorials, comments. You need to ask your friends. So basically, the whole process is that. So don't blindly go and spend three to four hours and just be completely blank during those three to four hours. You need to understand when you need to take a look at the editorial. And please don't think this way that in the first example which I just told that you spent three to four hours and you were able to solve the problem, right? So don't think that you took three to four hours to solve that problem because these are the hours that your mind actually developed. You need these hours. hours for your mind to develop this is when you learn this is when your mind grows one more crucial thing is people just solve problems like they will have 1000 2000 problems and they won't give a single contest i'll tell you why you will eventually suffer from this when you are just practicing when you are just solving 1000 2000 problems and you have zero contest you are in your cozy room you are just easily practicing and you're looking at the editorial everything is going good eventually when you will be going for the online assessment that would be in your college or in your computer lab and there the temperament is very high there would be a time ticking and that's where contest will help because contest train you under a pressure because during contest there is a time ticking and you need to solve 3 to 4 problems to get a good rating and you will be exhausted by those 2 to 3 hours because those 2 to 3 hours your mind would be continuously thinking by the end of those 2 to 3 hours you will be completely exhausted and that's the thing you want to train you need to be under pressure you need to be under time pressure such that when the day comes the online assessment or the technical interview you are able to perform good so this was like a very high level overview of what you need to do in those 2 to 3 years and what actually worked for me i have given more than 100 contests i have solved more than 1200 1300 problems in total So this is what you actually need to follow. Now let's come to the part where people actually solve sheets. Now I'm not saying that sheets are not important. Those are like gold mines because Striver sheet there are many sheets which you can follow but these things are like gold mines. And why I'm saying that is like I said in the start of the video that if you're in your first year or in your second year I don't suggest to take the sheets way but if you're very close to your interviews there are some problems which you actually need to practice separately. So there are some topics like linked list uh, BSTs you won't actually see these problems much in uh, code forces. but you can train yourself for that if you are giving contest in lead code also because if you are giving contest in lead code there's a good chance you will practice linked list you will practice bsts so what exactly is the ideal time to start practicing from sheets i would say it is 6 to 7 months before your actual placements because 6 to 7 months is more than enough if you want to practice some particular concept because now you're not doing that random thing now your practice strategy is very much focused you know what you're lacking at and you know what you want to practice 
so that's when those sheets help you know that your graph topic is weak so you will go ahead and practice some graph algorithms you will solve the hard algorithm similarly you will be aware that you don't have a good hold on linked list you will go ahead and practice linked list concepts so this is when these sheets help but if you're in your first year or your second year please go ahead with the code forces approach give contests from all the platforms and please follow progressive overloading while you're practicing so yeah that should be it for this video let me know if you have any doubts